Hi, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk more about my first phonograph. Uh, you know, I, I just recently made a video talking about um, what it was like, you know, how, what even got me interested in early recordings. And of course, being in school, uh, someone brought a record in and I fell in love with it. You know, someone brought in a cylinder record, which none of us knew. We ran a stick through the cylinder and made it roll on the turntable of a school phonograph and tried to play it with the reproducer or the uh, tone arm. That didn't work too well. We got a few sounds. And I was pretty hooked into all this, and so I started collecting records. And I did that in 1969 into 1970. I actually got a Berliner record in 1970. I had no idea what it was. You know, it's a very interesting thing, if I may say this, as someone who is a little older, that uh, in the age before the Internet, it was a very different process in getting information. You'd have to go to a library and hopefully be able to find information and obscure stuff like performers and... Uh, and record labels were not something that you could find in libraries at the time. And so it was all a great mystery. And when you're a young person, you know, you're just in school and you're, you're learning this stuff, you, you really have to ask people, and half the time the answers you got were incorrect, but you didn't know because you knew nothing. And so that's the way I was in 1971 when I got my first phonograph, which was a Victrola 6. It was a Victrola 6. It looked like it had gone through the war, and it very well may have. I don't know. But the thing is that it had a lot of issues. The spring was broken. There was no screw to hold the needle in on the reproducer. And the governor had not only lost the ball and broken the spring that holds the ball, but someone tried turning the turntable and it sheared the gears apart. So this was a real disaster of a machine. And this is what I learned from. I eventually, through hook and crook and trial and error, fixed a great deal of the machine. The only thing I couldn't fix was the spring, and I had someone do that in their basement. And so I had my machine, but I had needles. Well, they said, you need a needle. I said, okay. And the only thing that entered my mind was sewing needles. So I put a sewing needle in the reproducer. It was loose because there was no screw to hold it in place. Then again, I really didn't know what was used on these things. It sounded dreadful, and I played the ballad of Davy Crockett <laughs> on my Victrola 6. And it was a, a, a plastic type 78 record that wore out pretty quickly because a sewing needle certainly is not the best thing uh, to play a record with. So I, as I mentioned before, called RCA and got a pack of needles. And then talking to people and learning from people, I found a screw. I found a, a regular wall screw that fit and I, I was able to hold the needle in place. I was able to wind the spring and I used crazy glue to put the whole governor system back together because I didn't know. It was the only thing. It was a new product, crazy glue. And uh, I made a lump of it so it would catch onto a screw and hold the governor and make it run. You had to make the stuff as you went uh, because there was no one to talk to. And I talked to lots of people and everybody had their own story, their own ideas about things. But I got that Victrola 6. It was a mess. And you know, I had no idea about Victor. I thought it was RCA. I called it an RCA Victrola. And I saw 196 on the side with the patents, and I went, wow, it's from 196. Well, of course it wasn't. It was probably from 1923, something like that. And that was how I started with my, my first phonograph. And you know, there was something special about that machine, and... Maybe I should have kept it. Uh, I played with it for years, and I gave it away years later. And then, 20 years later, it came back to me. And I didn't keep it. I got rid of it again. So where it is now, I have no idea. I signed the inside. I put my name on the inside with a penny. Um, 
I guess in 1971, 72, wherever that machine is. Uh, it's kind of a fun thing that a kid would do. But I wanted to say this for people who, who are collecting or starting or getting their first machine. Today you have magnificent resources. You have many books. You have many uh, websites on the internet. The internet, I had no idea what the internet was. No one had any idea what the internet was in 1971. Didn't exist. Being online was at a supermarket. <laughs> but uh, I started with that, and then I slowly worked my way up and collected more machines and better machines. And every time, as any collector will tell you, you start from the bottom and you work your way up. And you keep replacing the machines that you had with a better one. Well, now I'm of an age where I'm not really interested in trying to get more machines. I have just a few. That's all I want. And I have records. And I've worked very hard to collect uh, some really good and interesting records. Not always the ones that are the ones wanted by most people, but the ones that I found that were really fascinating and of a historic nature at times. So, if you're getting a phonograph or starting collecting, um, go slowly. Teach yourself some how to work on these machines. Learn how to rebuild a reproducer. Learn how the motors work. Learn how the whole system of recording was developed. It always makes it a lot easier. So when you start collecting, um, you have an idea and you have a communion with those who preceded with you uh, in the hobby or in the industry uh, as to where they were going and you know where you're going with that device. So to my Victrola 6, which I got in 1971, uh, I hope it's doing well wherever it is and maybe it's teaching some other people new and interesting things on how to work with old phonographs. And for all of you starting, young kids, adults, seniors, whatever you may be, enjoy this whole thing. It's kind of fun because there's nothing like an early acoustic phonograph playing acoustic records because in this age of green, boy, there's nothing more green than an acoustic phonograph playing a record with no energy except the energy in which you use to tighten the spring. Thank you.